a very important show. It's one show you cannot afford to miss. So grab a pen and a piece of paper, call your friends, get your family involved, because I'm issuing an alert. There's a state of emergency with America's water. Lethal contaminants are creating a toxic mix in the water that you're drinking, in the water you bathe in, and the water you brush your teeth with. Parasites, chemical cleaning agents, arsenic, even animal feces can be lurking in the water in your home, and you don't even know it. Today, I'll tell you exactly what you must know about the water you drink and how to protect yourself and your family. This is life-saving information. Take a look. Water, it's the primal source of all life on our planet. We drink it, we bathe in it, we grow our food with it. Without it, we will die. So when we turn on the faucets in our homes, we expect the water that pours out to be clean, fresh, and safe. What you don't know is much of our water is making us sick, maybe even killing us. Here are the hard facts. Every year, nearly 20 million of us get sick from water infected by parasites, bacteria, and viruses. And one out of every 10 of us gets exposed to water contaminated with toxic chemicals, poisoning our bodies. Manganese, barium, lead, even arsenic, all of it pumped illegally into our soil contaminating our water supply. The New York Times reports the Clean Water Act, passed in 1972 to protect the safety of our water, has been violated more than half a million times just in the last five years alone. Who's poisoning our water? Businesses of every kind, from large chemical factories and power plants to your local gas stations and dry cleaners. But also you and me, the products we use every day. Prescription drugs, shampoo, sunscreen, all are showing up in our water supply and often can't be filtered out. America's compromised water puts all of us at risk. But would you know if you and your family are safe? I've called on the very best experts to shed some light on this very dark subject. First up, Charles Duhigg. He's a New York Times reporter who has blown the lid off what's happening to America's water. In a series of articles called Toxic Water, Charles has spent the last 10 months compiling a state-by-state -state list of clean water violations that is absolutely terrifying. It's way more extensive than any information the EPA has, and it exposes major flaws in the way our government protects our water. So Charles, again, congratulations. And I, I opened the Times, and I saw that big picture on the front page of a kid whose teeth had been rotted by some of the food uh, and water that he'd been exposed to. Teach us a little bit about where these pollutants are all coming from. Share with us some insights about how this would naturally happen, uh, even if someone didn't want it to happen. Well, Congress in the 1970s passed laws to protect all of our water sources. The Clean Water Act is the most famous of these. But laws are only as good as they are enforced. And what we discovered is that over the last couple of years, and basically since the early 2000s, these laws haven't been enforced. So companies that produce chemicals, companies like gas stations that have all these toxins and pollutants have been dumping them into waterways without anyone slapping them on the wrists. Unless you think it's not happening in your home, I love Charles to just explain to us how widespread this really is. Absolutely. We looked at data from every single state in the Union. And by the way, here's an image of that. If you can take a look back here, you can see uh, uh, this country and find your state and you'll see I mean, the number of violation, a percentage of violation rates in your state. There's no state uh, with one exception that's zero, and that state we're just not sure about yet. <laughs> Absolutely, you're exactly right. Be more specific if you can about who's to blame. Well, I think there's two, there's two fingers that we can point. The first is the companies themselves that are dumping things that they know have health impacts into waterways. But the second finger, and, and the other people who are to blame, are the state regulators. Yeah. It's compelling when you understand it, you realize how far reaching it really is. It impacts all of our lives. Well, in West Virginia, not far from the capital city, hundreds of people are suffering with painful illnesses, and some are even dying. They and many experts believe the diseases they're coming down with are a result of several toxic chemicals that were illegally dumped into their water by several coal mines in their area. I want you to meet Jennifer Hall Massey and her family. Take a look at what they believe their water is doing to their family's health. When we moved here, it was wonderful. Oh, good kids. My neighbor to the back of me is a mountain. In front of me, we have a creek. But 
within three years, I had to start having crowns on my teeth. And it made absolutely no sense to my dentist. Then I get pregnant with Ryan. Ryan had reflux, an extreme case when he was an infant. Clay had eczema really bad all over his face, his legs, his arms. My oldest boy, he, his teeth went awful. I think he had like nine caps or, or 11, I don't remember now. Bad water uh, got in, it just affected my teeth. I've had like five blood clots and I'm, I'm 39 now, not, not 89. In 2006, my little brother developed a brain tumor. He was only 29 years old. It was larger than a softball. In October the 6th of 06, he went shopping with his friends that evening, was fine, and fell over with a seizure at night, and no one saw him. When we lost my brother-in-law, that really turned things around. That kind of opened our eyes. We were talking to the neighbors and realizing how many others actually had brain tumors. Six people within a 300-yard radius had brain tumors. It had to be in the water. That's the only thing they had in common is the water. Our water tests came back with significant amounts of manganese, lead, barium, arsenic, and nickel, all things in very unsafe concentrations. Now we do not use the water for anything other than bathing, and I do have to wash clothes in it and clean house with it. Your number one job is to protect your children, and it's hard when your child is in the bathtub and you know they're sitting in arsenic and high levels of lead. This is America. But yet we don't have safe drinking water. Well, Jennifer's with us today. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. I mean, it touches all our hearts when we see that. And if I could actually speak for all the moms out there, I mean, you do what you think is best for your kids. And something that seems so obvious is giving them water, which seems good for them, ends up to be toxic for them. Yes. And how did that shake your world? Um, it was very... It was a shock to us. You know, this is America. This should not be happening today. And, um, you know, it breaks your, it, it kills your heart when you have to bathe them at night and know that they're sitting in arsenic, lead, manganese, things that they should never be exposed to. There are reports that chromium-6 is in the drinking water of hundreds of millions of Americans. However, health authorities don't know exactly what level of chromium-6 might pose health problems. They do know that when they put chromium in the drinking water of rats and mice, that that level of chromium caused cancer. Painkillers, blood thinners, and chemotherapy drugs are just some of the substances that are found in your drinking water. There's new information that some drugs are ending up in our water at levels never seen before. CBC's Kelly Crow has more on that. There's something happening to the rainbow darter, a tiny fish that lives in the rivers of southern Ontario. If they're downstream from a sewage treatment plant, the male fish turn into females. If you expose them to wastewater, they will feminize. They will have eggs in the testes. What's causing the males to develop eggs? Human hormones, residue from prescription drugs that are flushed into the river. Using new highly sensitive equipment, scientists are finding an increasing variety of prescription drugs in the waterways. Painkillers, blood thinners, chemotherapy agents, hormones, antibiotics. If we swallow it, scientists can find it in the water. Some of the drug comes in us and through us and out of us totally unchanged. So we actually have active drugs going into the waterway through our urine or feces. The Associated Press investigation reveals that nearly every drinking water supply in the country that's been tested for pharmaceuticals tested positive. 24 major metropolitan areas from coast to coast. What turned up? Trace amounts of everything from sex hormones to drugs for livestock, anti-seizure medications, prescription painkillers, even the antidepressant ingredient in Prozac. How many water suppliers that you spoke to actually filter out pharmaceuticals? Virtually no water supplier we talk to will claim or can claim to entirely filter out pharmaceuticals because the treatment systems aren't designed to filter out pharmaceuticals. In Philadelphia, for example, scientists detected 63 different pharmaceuticals in the untreated watershed and 56 in the drinking water.
Doctor, can you talk about bottled water a little bit? Is that any safer or how do we know? We've gone through and measured a bunch of waters and uh, Whole Foods, just about the same as tap water in terms of fluoride. Uh, how about Trader Joe's? Yep, same as tap water. Well, how about Arrowhead? Same as tap water. So might as well just take a hose and fill up the thing, put a lid on it and sell mm -hmm. it. What do you think? So we got terrible labels and we've got companies that are willing to take advantage of that. You know, nice clean looking label and mm -hmm. basically it's junk water. About the filters that you can buy at home, the filters that come in refrigerators um, that you can put on your faucet, the ones you can put pitchers in the refrigerators, all sorts of filters that you can buy. Do those do anything in terms of uh, taking things like um, fluoride out? No. The, the, those filters are predominantly made up of um, uh, carbon, mm -hmm. and carbon will remove some of your tihalmethanes and uh, make your water taste better, but they don't remove any of the fluoride. Some people think you can get it out by boiling it. It actually makes it worse. The fluoride stays in the pot, so if you start it out and put two quarts of water in to make a bowl, you know, a bowl of soup and you boil it down to one quart, twice as much fluoride in the water that's left in the bowl. The new water ionizer helps remove pollutants effectively. This produces clean, mineralized water with the most difficult contaminants reduced. And we have documented our results. As water ionizers have spread globally, so has demand for the ultimate ionizer filter, capable of advanced contaminant removal while retaining the beneficial alkalizing minerals. Standard treated and untreated tap water still contains urban, agricultural, industrial runoffs, pharmaceuticals, fluorides, and cleaning byproducts from the actual water treatment. You should be asking what type of filter you have in your ionizer. As a company, we decided to dramatically advance the performance of water ionizer filtration. And the result? Literally creating the cleanest and healthiest water possible. Because you deserve it. The reason this technology came about was we saw a great opportunity to take everything that our ionizers do and make it even cleaner and healthier for you. Toxins and chemical pollutants destroy our cells. Ionized alkaline water rebuilds our cells. But if we consume ionized water that is not clean of chemical pollutants, we're right back to where we started. The cleanest alkaline ionized water possible with most harmful contaminants rendered scientifically non-detectable. We have our filtration performance tested at independent certified labs and I'll never forget the first set of lab reports that came back. I was absolutely in awe at the levels of contamination that were removed, and I mean all across the board. Your VOCs, your organic compounds, your chemicals, your disinfectants, your heavy metals, yet everything beneficial such as the calcium, magnesium, potassium remained intact. I was surprised by such a simple device that it could deliver the type of results that it did. Through our supercharged media, trapping contaminants across the board while leaving the beneficial alkalizing minerals intact. Imagine the cleanest and healthiest water. That's the next generation. We took the opportunity to improve filtration to give you the opportunity to take back your tap. You can now have the cleanest and healthiest water possible. <laughs>